Hi, I'm Daniel Tokar, a blacksmith in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Um, what we're going to show you today is how a swivel gun, a small cannon, is assembled. Okay. First part we have is we've cut a 28 inch long piece of three and a quarter inch seamless tubing that has a two inch bore in it. And because as manufactured, it has a slightly irregular outside and a slightly irregular inside. I have turned it so that the part that's going to be inside the larger tube is a true 3.251 diameter and relatively smooth. Okay. This is a 14 inch long piece of three and a quarter inch inside diameter, um, five and a quarter inch outside diameter sta seamless steel tubing. It actually has a nice smooth regular bore so we don't have to bore it out. And the bore on this is 3.245 so it's about six thousandths smaller than the turn section of the other tube. So cold, the one tube will not slide inside the other. But when we heat the larger tube up to about 900 degrees, it'll expand enough that this tube will drop inside and then we'll cool it with water and the outer tube will shrink, making a, a shrink fit that actually puts some compression on the inner tube and uh, they won't come apart short of uh, being driven by a hydraulic press or something. So, all right, so we're ready to pull that out. All right, you ready for this? We'll use our big pair of pickup tongs. We grab them back there, drag it out of the fire. Make sure everything falls out. It on the landing pad. Then we take our friend, Mr. Tube. Say, please be the right size. Slides in. Get inserted to full depth. And then. want the inner tube to get hot and expand because if they both contract after they've gotten hot, it will be the wrong size. water goes to a violent boil quick, doesn't it? Well, there's about 40 pounds of 1,000 degree metal there. I'm hoping it's photogenic as I'll get out. Oh, I, I think we've got some footage we can use.
your average to bring it down to cool enough. Uh, we got about 10 minutes of this maybe before it's actually cool enough to touch. It's still making steam. Oh I know I can see that. The outside of that tube is probably about five or six hundred degrees right now. some shrimp. Side diameter of the tube so that when it's cleaned up and heated to about a thousand to 1200 degrees it will slide on and be heat shrunk on and then arc welded to the tubes. The forward the uh, muzzle reinforce is a forging that's made in the chip hammer with a die uh, one inch square stock is forged into a profile, longer piece, cut off to the right length, forged into uh, the reinforcing band and arc welded. And that's the part that goes up there and once it shrunk on, it goes there. And the assembly at that point is a rough assembly ready for machining to the profile. Now we need to make the breech plug. And that starts out as a three inch piece of uh, round stock, which is turned on the lathe and then threaded and the profile of the ball end turned. The breech of the cannon is tapped and the breech plug fitted so that the cannon can be turned with the uh, plug in place. This tool is the reamer that then reams the bore so that it is perfectly round and smooth. After the cannon is turned to the proper profile, we have to 
drill and tap and thread in the trunnions and forge the yoke of the swivel out of a block of steel about like that. And once that's put together, that allows the gun to swivel. That's how these cannons, these small cannons, get their name as swivel guns. Turn to follow the targets. This profile of a swivel gun is uh, a generic 18th century style of swivel gun that could have been used any time in the 18th century or early 19th century. Uh, they were used by the English, the French, and just about anybody else that was uh, uh, militarily active at the time. On land, they were uh, light artillery, something that could be packed or carried. Because this whole cannon weighs 115 pounds. So when you're in territory that does not have roads or uh, other easy transport and something has to be packed in, uh, you really couldn't have uh, regular field artillery. It was difficult to uh, take with you. Also, uh, a cannon this size uh, didn't take much in the way of uh, powder or weight and ammunition, so it was easy for them to carry uh, a large number of loads for it. These cannons were used on land and on shipboard, and depending upon uh, the target, they would have either been loaded with a two-inch round cast iron solid ball, which would be used against uh, small ships, small fortifications, wagons, and they also did a, uh, a good job uh, against infantry at a distance. They would uh, carry further distances. For closer in anti-personnel work, they were loaded with uh, pistol or musket balls. Um, the uh, uh, typical load would be something like 48 musket balls or 64 pistol balls. And they would have been loaded in a uh, canister or a bag. I make canisters out of uh, empty caulking tubes. Because I cut the spout off and cut about half of the, the height of the tube. And that's a good slip fit with cardboard wads and marbles. The marbles stand in for uh, pistol or musket balls. A typical field charge for this cannon is about 700 grains of single F black powder. And I also have a cleaning brush. And a cleaning jag, which can also be used as a rammer. And a tampon to keep the dirt and corrosion out of your bore while you're transporting it. I lost one of my marbles. <laughs> Somebody said that a long time ago. <laughs> I lost two of my marbles.